Welcome to edgeofcode.com series of infinite roller tutorials. If you prefer a written tutorial, you can find one at edgeofcode.com. In the previous tutorial, we learned about audio in Unity and added both background music and sound effects to our game. Today, we're going to look at how to use blocks rather than the square pieces that we've been using so far. So at the moment, we've just got lots of pieces lined up. But instead of that, we're going to use blocks. So we're going to draw about five different blocks, which will also be able to flip over the vertical axis to add more variation. We'll position one block underneath the character so that it always has something to land on. And then as the character rolls along, the first block will be removed and a random one from a list of possibilities will be added in front. And then each block will be positioned within some range so the height will be within a range and the X position will be in some range as well. So first let's draw the blocks. Um, open Inkscape and select the circle tool in the left panel. So we're just going to draw a shape and then manipulate it like we have before. So we're going to want to go to Object and Fill Stroke and pick your colours. So I think that will probably do pretty much what's there already. Um, pick a colour for the middle and for the line around the outside. And I've also picked a quite high stroke width um, because I want it to be like that, but you can choose how you want it to be. Okay, so next uh, go to Path and Object Path and then um, then we can manipulate it. So for this one, I'm going to do something like this. So you can just like move it around however you want it to be really. Um, that looks all right. Um, you want one of the blocks to be quite large and this will be the initial block. So do the same. Go to Path, Objects Path, and then manipulate it. Some of them you'll want to add in some extra ones, so to do that, select a few. I'm just going to select the bottom ones along here by pressing down Shift, and then press the plus icon up here so that we get more pieces to manipulate it. Um, That'll do. And then draw three more. Um, I'm going to speed up the video here so that it's not boring to just watch me draw blocks. Okay, so now that you've drawn all of your blocks, um, we're going to export them. So to do that, go to File, Export PNG Image, and then you'll get this window popped up over here. So click on one to select, and then change the width and height if you want to, and change the export path to wherever you want to save it. So I'm going to call this block block one and then to actually export it as a PNG file remember to click export and do this for each one you should also save the Inkscape file so go to file save and, and save this as block ink okay so next open your unity project and the scene and we're going to import the new block images. So find the place that you saved them in, uh, select all of them and just drag them into your sprites folder. 
they should all be imported correctly automatically, so there should all be sprites. Um, next we want to make game objects from each of them, so drag it into your scene. Um, and at the moment it's just the image, so because we want the character to be able to land on these, we want to add a new component, go to Physics 2D and click on Polygon Collider 2D. So this fits a collider to the shape of the object. It's more computationally intensive than the simpler colliders, but because we won't have very many of these in our scene at once, it should be fine. So do the same thing for each one. And then drag all of these into your prefab folder to create prefabs from them. and then delete the ones that are in the scene because we'll be adding them from our script. Now we're going to rearrange a few things to make everything clearer. So go to your scripts folder and open the terrain generator. Um, we're going to rename this to make it clearer what it actually is. So this is going to be the chunk terrain generator. Um, sorry, so that was select the class name, right click, refactor and click on rename and then just type in what you want to change it to, click OK, and then save the file. It's important that you save it here, and also if you have any other files open at the same time, you need to save those as well. Okay, so go back to your project, um, click on the terrain generator game object, and you'll see that the script is now missing because we've renamed it. So you just need to drag chunk terrain generator back onto the slot and it will remember what you've already dragged onto it. Next I'm going to rename the terrain generator to be chunk terrain generator and I'm going to drag the chunk game objects to be children of the chunk terrain generator. Okay. Okay, so next create two new scripts so right click in the project window create and C-sharp script and I'm going to create one called block which will be something similar to what chunk does and another one called um, block terrain generator and open both of these um, and then we want to delete what's already in there like usual And first of all, in the block terrain generator, we want to create a new variable to store the block prefabs. So, so the blocks is going to be public because we want to be able to drag them on. And it's going to be a game object array. To make the, an array, we put the square brackets at the end of the variable type. I'm going to give it a name of block prefabs. So the array means that we'll be able to add multiple blocks in the inspector to this block prefabs variable. So save the script, go back to Unity, and we're going to create a new game object. So right click in the hierarchy, go to create empty, and call this block terrain generator and drag the block terrain generator script onto it. So now you can see we've got this block prefabs variable here and click on the triangle and we see that we can um, change the size of the array. At the moment it's zero. We have five blocks so we want to change this to five. And then we get a list of slots where we can drag the prefabs onto. So do that now. Now I'll go back to the script and create another variable and this one's going to store the blocks once we've instantiated them. So it's going to be private. I'm going to make it a list 
which we actually need to add a using statement to access first. So up here, do using system.collections.generic. And that will give us access to list. Um, and it's going to be a list of blocks, which is the other script that we've created. We haven't done anything with it yet. Um, and I'm going to call it blocks. And then create in a week method to initialize this. So blocks equals a new list of type block. And this class is going to instantiate two of each block. One will be flipped on its x-axis. And we want to call this in a wake. Inside instantiate blocks, create a for each loop. So this is similar to the for loop that we've looked at before, but while for loop, um, we have an int that we start on, an upper limit, and we increase i by one for each loop. Instead of that, this goes through a list of objects. So we have an array of block prefabs and we can go through that array using a for each loop. So um, it's a list of game objects. So each game object is a block. Each game object is a prefab and those prefabs are in a list in a list called block prefabs. So this starts at the first game object in the array and it calls that game object prefab. And then the next time around the loop, we go to the next game object in the array and that gets called prefab instead, etc. Okay, so I'm going to create another new method called instantiate block this time. And that's going to instantiate a single block. going to need to pass in a couple of things in here. So we want to pass through the prefab that we've found in the list and also want to have a bool variable that tells us whether we want to flip it or not. So from here we'll call instantiate block, not blocks, instantiate block and we'll pass in the current prefab and we'll pass in true or false. Okay, so in here First, I want to instantiate it. So it's a game object, and I'm going to call it block game object, and that is instantiate prefab as a game object. Next, I want to set its parent to be the block terrain generator so that they all come underneath this game object. So um, so this block game object dot transform dot parent equals the current transform because bl this block terrain generator script is attached to the block terrain generator game object. Next we want to get the block script component from the prefab 
So I'm going to add this block script to each of the block prefabs. Actually, let's do that now. So for each of the block prefabs, we want to add the um, block script. So just click on add component, type in block and select and do this for each one. Um, and as you can see, once you've typed in block once, it remembers, so it makes it easier to do multiple ones. Okay. So go back to the script, and then we want to get it the block script. I'm going to make a variable called block to store that. In. So that's block game object dot get component. Next, I'm going to add an if statement to see if we want to flip it or not. So if flip, then we want to flip the block. I'm going to put the flip um, method that's oh, right here. So flip x, I'm going to put that method inside block. So for now, we'll keep going. But in a moment, we'll go into the block script and add this method. Next, add the block to the list that we've created. So add to blocks list. It's blocks dot add and the thing we want to add to it, which is block. Um, and then we also want to deactivate it because we're going to activate them as the character rolls along. So this is just to instantiate the blocks, not to place them. And this will be another method that we'll create in a moment. Okay, so save this script and then go to block and we'll create a flip x method to start with. Which will flip the block. To do this, we use the local scale of the game object. So use local scale to flip. To access it, we first store it in a vector three. So block scale equals transform dot local scale. And then to flip it, we want the block scales x component to be multiplied by minus one. So this line is equivalent to having block scale dot x equals block scale dot x times minus one. It's just shorthand for that. And then we want to assign the new local scale to the game object's local scale. And that's it. That will flip the game object across the x-axis. The other one we want to add is set block active. So, and this needs to be public, obviously, because we're accessing it from the other script. Both of these need to be public. Save the script and go back to block terrain generator. So this should all work now, and we just need to call instantiate block from inside here, passing in prefab and false, and then again, but with flipped equaling true. I'm just going to add a comment to this as well. So instantiate a block 
instantiate the same block but flip it for variation. So far this will generate some blocks but they'll be invisible because we've set them as inactive. Um, so there's not much point in testing it out yet. Although we could, if we comment out this line, save, go back and press play. And we can see that we've got lots of game objects instantiated. Okay. And do that. Next, we are going to add an initial block to make sure that the character always falls on it in the beginning. So to do that, create another new variable. Um, let's be the block to start on. And it's public game object. I'm going to call it initial block prefab. I'm doing it like this because I want to be able to pick which one I use. So save this. Go back to Unity, select Block Terrain Generator, and we should get a new slot. Um, I think it's Block 2 that I want. This is the largest one. Yeah, Block 2. So I'm going to drag that into the slot. Go back to the script. And then create another two variables. Um, One's called private block. One is a private variable of type block, and it's to keep track of the previous block. And the other one will be the initial block. So we need to remember which block the initial block was. Obviously, that's just the block component of initial block prefab. So create a new method called um, create initial block So first let's set a position, and so vector 3, uh, call it position, and the character is initially at pretty much 0, 0, 0, it's a bit higher, so I'm going to try um, 0, minus 10, 0 as the initial position. We can change that in a minute so it's not quite right. Now instantiate the object. So game object lock game object equals instantiate prefab initial block prefab. And I want to instantiate it with this position and no rotation. So that's quaternion dot identity. Set the parent like the others. And it equals the current transform. And then we want to set this as the initial block. So the initial block, which is this block object, um, is the block game object dot get component of type block. And the previous block is also this initial block. So previous block, the first previous block is initial block. and call this from awake. 
for instantiate blocks. Okay, so let's test this again. So save the script, go back to Unity, press play. Oh, uh, let's see what the error is. Cannot implicitly convert type. Uh, okay, so that is because I have missed off writing as game object at the end of this. Because without as game object, it doesn't know what type of object we're trying to instantiate. So save again, go back, and hopefully that error's gone. Okay, press play. And we have, you can see behind this, there's the initial block. It's a bit small, so I'm going to scale it up. Um, if I click the triangle by block to an terrain generator, I can see the active block, which is the initial one, and another 10 blocks that are not active. Um, okay, so let's go to prefabs, and I'm going to select all of them and change the scale to maybe three. I'm just going to do three on all axes, and then press play and see if that's better, which it is. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop there for this tutorial. Um, so, so far we've just created some blocks and put them into Unity. And now we've instantiated them and placed the initial one in the right place. Um, next time we'll just carry on with this. And we'll do things like add another button to the menu so that we can either play the um, chunk one or the block one, depending on what we, what we choose. Okay, so uh, thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.